Uh, here is my um, journal, and I'll give you an example. You need to do one page, and you have a choice of either doing a topic or a verse or a chapter. Uh, it's totally up to you. But you need to do 10 of them. And here is what your page looks like, you know, uh, if it's your screen or whatever. You write uh, Proverbs, whatever, the reference of either the topic, like you're going to do the tongue or dating or money or whatever. Uh, or you, you do a verse like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Or you do a chapter like Proverbs 1. Okay. Do you guys have to write a title for every chapter of the Bible, like all of Word of Life does? So you're one third of the way through your project. You've already done Proverbs, haven't you? Oh, well, you're really close. I mean, it'll help you with that project. So the first thing you do is you write the title for the, the chapter. And so my title is uh, Knowing God is Wisdom. So I wrote on my paper, Knowing God is Wisdom. That's my that's my title. I made it up myself. Is there any right or is there any wrong title? No. You pick it. You pick what you think the chapter's about. Then you write down a title for each chapter. Then you write down a summary for each chapter of the lessons, the truths, or doctrines. And so I wrote down in Proverbs, so here are my lessons. Uh, and I wrote down number one is, God offers us all we need. So look at Proverbs 1, 1. So you can see how I did this. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, to know wisdom, verse 2, to perceive words, to receive instruction, to give the prudence, verse 4, to the simple. So I, my lesson from that is, I wrote down, lesson 1, Proverbs 1, 1 to 4, God... By the way, you know why I do that? That's a theta in Greek. They abbreviate everything with the first letter in the Greek language. That's how they abbreviate. So when I, I guess I took so many years of Greek, I abbreviate. But that's God. So you just write God. So God offers all we need. All we need. And then I wrote down uh, on my journal... He offers wisdom, he offers instruction, he offers justice, he offers discretion. He offers everything that I need to make it through life. So I wrote all that down. And then I kept looking. So that's my first lesson. My first uh, summary of the lessons, the truths, and the doctrines I find in my chapter. Um, secondly, I wrote in Proverbs 1, 8 and 9. My second one, I mean, there's, you could endlessly do this, but the big ones I wrote, listen to the wisdom of your parents. See how it says in verse 8, my son, hear the instruction. Verse 10, my son, you know, if sinners do this. Verse 15, my son, do not walk in the way. And what I see in there is that I need to Think about listening to the wisdom of parents. Actually, my parents are both with the Lord, but the wisdom of others, to learn wisdom from others. So I wrote down, listen to the wisdom, listen to wise counsel. So I wrote that down, and then I explained it. Uh, steer away from foolish, say no. See how it says in there, um, um, Verse 22, how long will you simple ones? Will you love simplicity? Uh, all that, I wrote down just ideas from this text. Then the next one I found, so I wrote Proverbs 1, 20 to 27. From that section, what I learned is um, don't neglect God's wisdom. In other words, don't just listen to it, respond to it. Don't neglect God's wisdom. Now, if you read, all this is is me saying what the Bible is saying from little groupings of verses. So I wrote all those down. So here's the title. 
right there. That's number one. This is the summary. Number two. Now, here's the hardest part. I led a Bible study. I was a pastor, and I, I used to have Bible studies with coaches and Bible studies with policemen and teaching them how to study the Bible. Do you know what people do when they study the Bible? They look for verses to share with you, you know, with their children or with their husband or with their kids or with, you know, they're always looking for verses to share with someone else. That's not the purpose of Bible study. The purpose of Bible study is using the Bible as a mirror. Uh, once when I was pastoring, Bonnie and I were living in this little New England house that was so old. It was built in 1828. It didn't have hallways. It just was rooms. And you walk from one room into another room. There was no hallway. And so our kids would wake up. So I would get dressed in the dark. I mean, I laid out my clothes at night. And in the morning, I'd get dressed in the dark. And I went to a Bible study. And I had put my sweater on backward so that the zipper in the front was here. But I, I just pulled it on. I didn't even notice. And so I went to this Bible study. No one said anything to me. Of course, I hadn't seen myself in a mirror. Then I went to the local donut shop, and I bought a donut. When I came out, there was a television camera from the local news station, and they were interviewing everybody that was eating donuts. And so I was on television that morning. And I finally, I got to work at church, and the secretary, the sweet 80-year-old secretary, looked at me, and she said, Pastor, did you mean to wear your sweater backward? And I thought, and I looked, and I felt, I went, oh. Did you know a mirror is what you look at to make sure your sweater's not on backward? The Bible is the mirror we look at to see what needs to change. So from these truths, God offers all that we need. We should listen to wise counsel. Don't neglect God's wisdom. This is the hardest part of Bible study. You write a prayer where you apply, see, asking the Lord to change you, to work in you, to impact your life by a personal application of the truth. So here's the prayer I wrote. Actually, it's like six lines long. I wrote it right there. Lord, you offer all we need. Please pour out your wisdom and instruction and discretion on me. See, I'm asking, I'm asking that this go from just being a fact to being in my life. That's the hardest thing. In all the Bible studies that I led, I would ask the men, I'd say, and how are you going to apply that in your life? And they go, I don't know. I said, why don't you start by asking God to do what he says in Proverbs or whatever book we're studying. Ask him to do what, look at verse 2. To know wisdom. Lord, I want to know wisdom. And instruction. Lord, instruct me. Look at verse 3. To receive instruction of wisdom. Lord, help me not to push away people that are trying to help me in my life. I'm in Bible school now. And they're going to tell me, you need to change this. You talk too much, or you don't talk enough, or you think about, or you act proud, or you're impatient. I want to receive instruction. You know, look at verse 5. A wise man will hear an increase in learning. I want to increase in learning. So I wrote, um, I want your way, not my own way. Help me to listen to wisdom from others. Help me to steer clear of foolishness. I ask for your promise, security, and blessing for all my days. For Jesus' sake, amen. So look, that's one page. I do this every day. This is how I do my, my quiet time. I actually write a, one of these every day. Do you know how long that takes? I don't know, 10, 12, 15 minutes. You just read the chapter, find the truths, and actually write a prayer where you're asking God, to do something from his word in your life. Did you know that's the essence of Bible study? It's not more facts. It's not knowing who Jeremiah's great-grandfather was and be able to win the Bible quiz. That's not the purpose of Bible study. The Bible study 
is to look in the mirror so your sweater's not on backward. In other words, asking God to show you. Remember over here I told you that all the Bible is about God and God's desires. Proverbs shows God's desires for me. This application prayer right here is me asking God to do what he wants to do in my life, inviting him in. It's very exciting. So my goal is for you to learn how to apply Proverbs. Now, every class, I'm going to show you one of these. This is the best book for, for young people your age. It's about how you treat each other, how you think. Uh, oh, the parts about marriage and family. Do you know what? There are two whole chapters on pornography in the book of Proverbs. Did you know that, that most people don't even realize the culture we're living in is pornified? That, that young people have a warped view of sex, of marriage, of themselves, of, of the opposite sex. They, we're warped, our culture really is. Proverbs says, hey, you need to get unwarped and see life the way God does. Uh, by the way, that's chapter 5, chapter 7.